Which is a white-skinned grape? Garganega, Corvina, Montepulciano, or Tempranillo? Now, of course, we need to be able to remember what color each of these grapes are by name. So let's take a look. Tempranillo might stand out as the most obvious red grape in here, so we can cross that one off the list. Montepulciano as well. That might ring some bells as being Montepulciano do Abruzzo, a red wine. And then we're left with Garganega and Corvina. Now, these might be a little tricky. In fact, they, they might be tricky because they come from two adjacent regions. One comes from Valpolicella, one comes from Suave, and the, both those regions are located in Veneto. So in this case, Garganega is the grape used in Suave, and Suave is a white wine. Corvina is the grape used in Valpolicella right next to Suave, and it is a red wine. So our answer is Garganega. A wine's secondary aromas and flavors come from blank. Fermentation, post-fermentation winemaking, or maturation. Now, according to WSET's systematic approach to tasting wine, there are three different categories of aromas to identify in wines. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now, primary aromas are said to come from fermentation itself. And this includes largely your, your fruit flavors. Tertiary aromas come from age, they come from maturation, which leaves secondary aromas. Now, during the post-fermentation winemaking stage, this includes things like oak barrels, malolactic fermentation, or surly aging. These are all considered secondary aromas, so our answer here is post-fermentation winemaking. A sweetened fino sherry is labeled cream, pale cream, tawny, or amontillado. There are a lot of layers to this question, so we might be able to pick one of these out right off the bat that is incorrect, and that's tawny. You might remember that tawny refers to a style of port, but that leaves us with cream, pale cream, and amontillado. Now, if we remember the three types of sherry, we have fino, oloroso, and between the two, amontillado. This leaves us with cream and pale cream. Now, when each of the individual styles of sherry are sweetened, they take on a new name. Now, you may remember that these names are pale cream, medium, and cream. Now, if we think about how Fino is the lightest of the sherry styles, Oloroso is the heaviest, we can match those up and remember that Fino sherry, when sweetened, becomes pale cream sherry. In Alsace, wines made with late harvested grapes are labeled Sus Reserve, Millésime, or Vendange Tardive. So let's take a look at these. Sous Reserve is a German term, could work in Alsace because it does border Germany, but in this case, Sous Reserve is a term that refers to grape juice that is removed from must before fermentation, so it retains all of its sweetness. And this juice can be added to wines later on to contribute sweetness. And that leaves us with Millésime and Vendange Tardive. Millésime in French is equivalent to vintage. It's, it's the same as us saying it's a 2010. It's, it's uh, the year that it came from. And that leaves us with Vendange Tardive, which is our correct answer. Which is a tertiary aroma for red wine? Mushroom, cheese, orange marmalade, or wet stones? So let's go through each one of these and categorize them into primary, secondary, and tertiary. Let's start at the bottom with wet stones. Wet stones is actually a primary aroma. It comes from fermentation, from volatile compounds that are present in grapes. Now, let's look at cheese. Cheese, in fact, is a secondary aroma because it comes from post-fermentation winemaking steps, uh, in this case, malolactic fermentation. So this leaves us with orange marmalade and mushroom. Now, if we think about it, think about like, what kinds of aromas we find in white wines, Citrus is absolutely one of those, and orange marmalade, I guess in a way we can think of as an evolution of those citrus aromas. So that one is, is reserved for white wines, and that does leave us with mushroom, which in fact is a, a, a tertiary aroma that can form in red wines.